We are facing the most significant counterintelligence threat to the nation of our lifetime. And they're doing it through cyber means and targeting our trusted workforce. It is time that we stop talking about what we're gonna do about it and get organized and come together to counter what we are facing, which is truly a nation state threat on many fronts. My name is Carrie Wibben. I'm the Deputy Director of the Defense Counterintelligence and Security Agency, or DCSA. The Defense Security Service was recently renamed in an executive order to the Defense Counterintelligence and Security Agency. So it is in effect the newest agency in the Department of Defense. And the change was required because we're really foundationally changing the mission of the agency. The executive order mandated that the National Background Investigations Bureau, or NBIB, be transferred from the Office of Personnel Management into the Department of Defense and specifically into DSS. And this merger and renaming and rebranding of the agency significantly changes just about everything DCSA does from a mission standpoint. For the industrial security mission specifically, we have been under a three or so year uh, transition to move from a compliance-based approach, which is really time-based, cookie-cutter, checklist, to a much more agile, risk-based approach for industrial security. What we're implementing as the new methodology is to integrate all of our skill sets and expertise and send out joint teams to cleared industry companies and facilities and we send industrial security reps, we send counterintelligence experts, we send IT experts, and we do a very comprehensive and holistic assessment to identify critical vulnerabilities that might exist at that company or facility that would really prevent them from being able to protect the information, sensitive information or even classified information related to a specific department or government-wide program or technology. So we've been under a significant transition for some time. The integration of the new mission set, uh, personnel vetting is really how we summarize it, gives us an opportunity to kind of round out our holistic security approach so that we're not just focused on processes and facilities, but we're really able to take a much deeper dive into the people who are actually working on those programs and technologies in those facilities and companies. This new methodology has demonstrated uh, significant success, uh, even though it's relatively new. An example of this is recently our team identified a company within the, their region that was working on a critical technology uh, for a defense intelligence community agency. And this company, it was a case where they were a smaller company and they were awarded a pretty big significant contract and they had to grow up pretty quickly. And we found that the security apparatus for that company just hadn't matured to where we really needed it to be. This integrated team approach resulted in our ability to detect over 20 vulnerabilities and they range the gambit from operations security issues, insider threat concerns, counterintelligence concerns. Another one was the cybersecurity issues at the company. The IT security was, was not anywhere close to where it needed to be. And it really gave us an opportunity working with that company and working with the program office, the acquisition program office, in very close partnership to demonstrate the value and effectiveness of that partnership. And both the company and the acquisition office really had a completely open and transparent attitude because at the end of the day we all we wanted was to be able to identify and close down those vulnerabilities and prevent our adversaries from exploiting them. So it really served as a wonderful example for how I hope we can continue to scale this new methodology. That is probably the hardest part is that it is a little bit resource intensive but in partnership with the acquisition programs we can we can solve this problem together. In the case of the, our new methodology, as we're implementing it across the National Industrial Security Program in all 10,000 companies, one of the biggest, biggest challenges we face is 
going beyond just that first tier or that prime supplier, that, that big company, or in this case, a mid-sized company, and actually taking a much deeper dive into the supply chain. So in this case, the, the product essentially was algorithms, software. But, and they, they eventually end up in a classified program. But those algorithms, if you kind of look into the supply chain, if you have suppliers and companies into your supply chain that are helping write this code, and they have lineage back to Russia or China, that presents a vulnerability. And so we can't just look at the surface level. We have got to work with these companies to, to help them, number one, map their supply chain and understand their own supply chain, which is a big part of the challenge. But then we have got to really develop a capability in partnership with acquisition and with, with these companies to map out threats within and targeted at that supply chain, which is a constantly changing site picture, thereby complicating, complicating it even more. The threat is constantly evolving. The supply chain is constantly evolving. So it's a very dynamic situation. And that's really why we can't just do it once. We have to do it continuously. So that's a big focus of our new methodology. I'll say if that's, that's really one area where we've got to grow into that. But we're not in a position, nor do we have access to the data holdings that really give us that insight into these companies' supply chains. And so that's an area where we really have to work with the companies and the acquisition offices to get that basic information so then we can do the follow-on work. One agency that comes to mind specifically is DCMA, the Defense Contracting Management Agency. In meeting with their director recently, we realize that DCMA, in execution of their mission, is really embedded in a lot of these companies and sometimes pretty deeply into the supply chain and onto the manufacturing floor. So they have very unique insight and access to supply chain vulnerabilities that we, DCSA, on the outside just don't have. But what we uniquely have in DCSA is access to the intelligence community data holdings and threat information specific to that very same supply chain. So when you round out that holistic vulnerability picture into the supply chain and that threat picture, you start to really get an appreciation for the impact of both of those sides of the equation and then what mitigations might be necessary and appropriate to stem the theft of our critical technology. Another lesson learned I would point to is really recognizing that we have got to get into the acquisition process much earlier than we are today. We're really at milestone B, which I call too little too late. We really need to be part, I would argue, of the down select process because in the example I gave earlier, had we been integrated with that program office from the very beginning in forming that down select and that award process, we probably could have mitigated up front all of those vulnerabilities and prevented those opportunities for our adversaries to exploit them. So that's really a critical lesson learned and I think as you think what that means for acquisition department wide, uh, in our process, it leads us to a much different pro framework, really, for how security has to become a critical foundation of the acquisition process, and it has to be a full partnership. Cost, schedule, and performance will always be the key, key pillars of acquisition. And we don't want security to be that fourth pillar that gets traded off against the other three, and that's why we really describe it as a foundation of acquisition. I think the one thing I would tell the acquisition community about DCSA is that our primary job is to make sure that our capabilities are being delivered to the warfighter uncompromised by our foreign adversaries and to make sure that the workforce that is developing those critical capabilities is fully trusted and that's both the federal workforce and the contractor workforce. We're only successful in that mission really on both sides if we are part partnering fully with the acquisition community. One of my biggest fears is that we have yet to realize the full extent uh, and impact of the theft of our critical technologies on our ability to maintain our strategic advantage as a nation and maintain our competitive edge into the future.